We have a number of manipulation techniques which uh, could be very useful to reduce an internal derangement. But the major question is, which technique do I use when and how many times? Is there any specific nice strategy to get optimal results with manipulation? Of course there is. So first, some, some, general, some general rules. With elderly patients or patients suffering from osteoporosis, don't do any techniques with the lever. So, leg over, Dallison, reverse stretch with femur, forbidden. Less number of manipulations, this is empirical. Let's say you don't do more than four maneuvers per session. And a greater interval, perhaps the patient doesn't come back tomorrow, but he comes back in two days. But that yeah, de depends a little bit on the irritability of the patient. A fixed general rule, if a patient has an acute lumbago, a big posterocentral internal derangement, you never do extension techniques. He's blocked in flexion. Extension is very painful and limited. If you would ask the patient to lie on his abdomen and ole, extension technique, that would be torture. And if you decide to manipulate, you always start with the stretch maneuver as the first manipulation. Always. No exception. You do one maneuver <coughs> and you check. What do you check? The positive test. When straight leg raise was positive, one maneuver, okay, lie on your back, check straight leg raise. When straight leg raise was negative, okay, stand up and check his movements in standing. We are never going to do a cocktail of four or five maneuvers and then see what happens. That's not sensible. Because when the patient is better, you don't know why he's better. Because of maneuver number one or maneuver number three. But if the patient is worse, then we have a problem. What made him worse? Your first technique, your third technique or your fifth technique? So let's try to work as much as possible in an objective way. So you do the stretch, you do it once, you check, it's better. What do you do then? Never change your winning team. Do the stretch again, perhaps a little bit more intensive. You check, hey, better. Do the stretch again. So I never know in advance how many times I'm going to perform the stretch. As long as it helps, I continue. But of course, a certain moment, it doesn't help extra anymore. And what you do then, then you're going to choose another technique. But before we do that, what is our definition of better? Yeah, you, you check the test movement. What does that mean, better? Well, the patient who says, I have less pain during the test movement. Or he has still the same pain, but more range of motion. Or less movements became painful. Straight leg raise was painful. And some tests in standing. And now the straight leg raise is negative, but the tests in standing are still positive. Centralization, super important. When you provoke centralization, what does that mean? It goes in the good direction. And finally, the appearance of a painful arc. Let's imagine. Straight leg raise was painful and limited. You know what that means. And after the maneuver, you find a painful arc on straight leg raise. Painful arc means the internal derangement became smaller. Yes, continue. So I'm looking for those things. So I'm not working with my fingers. I'm not palpating anything. Yeah? I'm looking for 
objective information. Okay, so we do the stretch with the painful side up. It's better. Okay, continue. As long as it is better, do the same. But at a certain moment, it's not extra better anymore. So what are you going to do then? You continue in the same direction. The same rotational direction. Okay, you go to the leg over. And what do you see then? Hey, it's better again. Do another leg over. And another one. If the patient has a bigger protrusion with a lateral deviation, probably you did some stretches, some leg overs, and then you do the Dallison. Let's imagine bigger protrusion. You already did, hypothetically, two or three of those maneuvers, two maneuvers, two maneuvers, hypothetically. You did six, seven, six, seven maneuvers. The patient is better, but of course he's not okay yet. So you stop here. He comes back tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. What's the first thing you do? Check his test in standing, his thread leg raise. And when you manipulate again, you don't continue there where you stopped yesterday. No, no. Every day is a new day. Start here again and see what happens. When I talked about the indications of manipulation, I gave you a specific example of patient selection, a small protrusion with a small partial articular pattern, painful arc, and so on. And I told you this is your best patient to do the treatment. Well, I guarantee you, you do a few of those ones, a few of those ones, and you can stop. He's okay. This is real success story. There is an exceptional situation where a patient has a deviation and a lot of pain. The pain is okay, but he still has some deviation. And this is not so frequent. In that case, at the end of the strategy, you're going to do the combination of the three anti-deviation techniques. So this story is a very, is a very positive story. But we have also another option. Let's imagine you do the stretch, painful side up, not better, but not worse either. Do the stretch again, not better. Okay, that rotation direction is apparently not the good direction for that patient. So then you go to the reverse stretch. And what you see then, yes, better. And you continue with the reverse stretch. Or, let's imagine you do the stretch. It is better, but you don't continue with the leg over because the patient has osteoporosis. Then you can go in that direction. Stretch and reverse stretch for osteoporotic patients, no problem. A third option. You do the stretch, better, 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 and then you decide to go to central extension manipulation. And what would be the main reason to do that? Look at your examination. If extension is good and flexion is the problem, then most likely you're going to be able to manipulate an extension in a very comfortable way. And if necessary, you go to the unilateral extension. But to summarize, if you manage well four techniques, stretch, leg over, reverse stretch, central extension, you can reduce the majority of the indicated internal derangements. But I have two more remarks. <clears throat> I told you stretch painful side up. Yeah. Because huh, you open the painful side. What do you do? What do you do with a patient who has bilat bilateral pain? Ah. Well, you check his straight leg raise. And let's imagine that his left straight leg raise is more painful or limited than the right one. 
then you start with the left side up. But the second remark, I told you already on several occasions, keep an open vision. Yeah. And on other occasions, I heard that colleagues, when they do some maneuvers, they don't open the painful side, but they close the painful side. And my first reaction was, this is not logical. It's easier and more efficient to open. But my second reaction was, okay, Stephen, listen, look, do it, yeah, analyze that. And what do you see in certain circumstances, closing the situation is also efficient. And then I started to experiment. And now I'm going to say something special to you. Stretch painful side up, not better, okay? So then, according to my strategy, I would go to the reverse stretch. But I didn't do that. I repeated the stretch with the painful side down. And what happened? He was better. So what is the moral of the story? There is no golden secret. On the contrary, this, this view makes this strategy even stronger. So I start first with painful side up. And if I don't have any accessory amelioration anymore, then I restart with my strategy with the painful side down. And my strategy becomes double as efficient. And in fact, in fact, that's logical. Why, why are certain exercises efficient, like extension exercise, flexion exercise, or whatever? Why does that help? And other kinds of manipulation? Because you play with intradiscal pressures. And thanks to this hydrostatic pressure mechanism, we are able to reduce some types of internal derangement. So, before you start manipulating, please keep that strategy in mind. This is super important. So have fun with your manipulation.